Marana Sati, meaning reflection or remembrance, often translated as mindfulness of death, as a Buddhist meditation practice aimed at reflecting on the impermanence of life and the inevitability of death. It is one of the traditional mindfulness practices in Buddhism and is considered essential for developing a deep understanding of life's impermanence and the detachment from worldly desires. Morana Sati encourages individuals to recognize that all things in life, including their own existence, are impermanent. Nothing lasts forever, and change is an inherent part of life and existence. This awareness is fundamental in Buddhism, and this is what helps us reduce attachment to the transient pleasures and possessions of the material world. There is the aspect that requires contemplation of death. It can involve visualizing one's own death or considering the deaths of loved ones. Both are important. The purpose is to accept the nature of existence, which is cyclic, to accept the reality of life and death as two sides of the same coin, a fundamental law of existence. Marana Sati also serves as motivation. By acknowledging the inevitability of death, individuals are encouraged to live their lives with purpose and intention. These practices motivate people to focus on what truly matters and develop qualities such as compassion, generosity, and wisdom. Contemplation of death should eliminate the fear of death itself. By coming to terms with death in meditation, individuals can become more at ease with the prospect of dying. It should lead to greater peace of mind. Mananasati is also a form of mindfulness meditation. It involves maintaining full awareness of all phenomena of the present moment whilst being fully mindful and aware of the inevitability of death which can happen at any moment. The practice should also help people become less distracted by worries about the future and regrets of the past. Marana Sati is also a means for preparing for the transition of death, because in Buddhism, death is really just a transitionary point, a change from one state of existence to another. These exercises prevent sudden surprise, shock, or brooding anxiety that's building more and more when one thinks about their approaching death as they get older, so that the person doesn't become overwhelmed by surprise, regrets, memories, or the fear of the unknown, and there's no trauma. Stress is always something to avoid when practicing spirituality. So Marana Sati is not meant to instill fear or depression. It is just a reminder. This practice is a great means of preparation, the best means to prepare for death. As with everything practiced in mystical or religious traditions, Marana Sati must be part of a balanced lifestyle. One should not become fixated or fascinated obsessed with the idea of death. A number of decades ago, this involved simply going to a graveyard where there were still decaying corpses that haven't yet been buried and are rotting away. And the monks there would sit for a while, for a number of hours, for the evening, sometimes all night, and just allow themselves to become very acquainted with the stark, direct experience of death, not their own death, but somebody else's. And so they'd watch these corpses hour by hour as they rotted, and they meditated on them at the same time. And this produces an enormous comprehension. One gets a very strong dose of this reality that we all have to face. And the Buddha taught that corpses are nothing to be afraid of. All a corpse is, is just a mixture of elements. Natural elements, the natural four elements, water, earth, fire, air. And by this point, the air aspect has mostly left. There's not much oxygen in a dead body. A person had stopped breathing long ago. The fire aspect, the heat, 
the warmth, the temperature of the body, is long gone. That immediately dropped upon death. And so what remains is a body that's mostly water and flesh. This serves as a strong reminder of the core principles of Buddhism, like anika, or impermanence, anatta, insubstantiality, particularly the insubstantiality of the self. Annihilationism posits that death results in the complete cessation of existence. But this perspective implies that there can be no personal experience of the process of death, since consciousness would be absent. If one ceases to exist after death, the question arises, how can one personally experience death then? If beings were to vanish upon death, there would be no means for anyone to return and validate this to the living. As one lacks existence, particularly the existence of consciousness, to somehow perceive this nothingness, this non-existence after death. Many individuals have reported having experienced profound revelations and visions of life, essentially, and the existence of alternative dimensions during near-death experiences, in which many of these people had died for minutes on end and had consciousness perception. And in contrast, nothingness, or non-existence, can't be seen, perceived, or revealed, theoretically, if there really was nothing after death. Therefore, in the absence of such revelations, intuitions, or reasoned evidence, annihilation remains a matter of speculation, or a gamble. Even if annihilation were proven true, one would remain unaware of it, since one would cease to exist. <laughs>